we doing guys? Um, listen, I was, uh, what was I doing? I was uh, having a conversation where there was a, a thread on a gaming forum that I'm a member of um, and somebody, in fact I'll tell you how it originated one of the guys has uh, picked up, uh, it's the latest, is it? I don't know, he's picked up one of the new mobile phones um, and my phone's actually due for renewal um, I was just going to keep my Nexus 4 which I've got which is a, a brilliant uh, phone but um, he got such a good deal, I thought to myself, you know, maybe there's a, an excellent phone out there. So I asked uh, some of the guys, in your opinion, what is the, the best smartphone at the moment? And they basically came back and says, you know, how can you say, there's no, not such a definitive answer. It's like saying, what's the best car available? Uh, what is the best 8-bit computer? That got me thinking, what is the best 8-bit computer? Now I'm sure, uh, I do apologise now if this question has been asked a million times, I'm sure it probably has, I mean I'm fairly new to, to making videos on YouTube, um, but I'm sure this has been a, a, a question that's been asked a thousand times, but this is basically a, a, a question to the community, um, what in your opinion is the best 8-bit machine? Now I'm not asking what your favourite machine is because that may be completely different from what the best machine is, uh, I'm guessing Again, if you're watching this video, it's because you've probably got a decent collection of machines, whether it's through emulation or whether you've actually you're lucky enough to actually have the, the proper hardware. So um, in my case, I mean, I was a Commodore 64 man. Um, that was the machine of choice back in the day. There was no such thing as owning two computers. I mean, maybe some rich people had more than one system, but I certainly didn't. And most people, you know, back then, you could only afford one computer. If I wanted to get a new system, get a new upgrade, I had to sell my old one. Um, it wasn't a question of keeping the old one and, and buying a new one. It was always a question of having to uh, sell the old one to, to get money to buy the new one. So yeah, back in the day I had a Commodore 64. Um, now, that was, the, that was the first real, in fact that was the first, other than the, the Texas T19948 which I had for a short time which was crap. Um, I saw a teacher at school had a ZX81, which is obviously, well, it was, <laughs> I'm not going to say it was rubbish, but for games it wasn't exactly cutting edge. Um, so the Commodore 64 was the only computer I had really seen, and uh, I mean a couple of my mates had them, so that's that's the only computer I'd ever actually had experience actually using. Um, then when I got friends with a, a guy, Grant, he had a Spectrum. I'd seen pictures of a Spectrum, um, in fact, I'll, I'll tell a lie, I'd, I'd obviously seen, you know, John Menzies used to have, uh, back in the day, John Menzies used to have, um, you know, they used to have all the, the TVs in display in their shop window, you know, running different games and, uh, you know, so obviously saw the Spectrum running games then, but yeah, when my mate Grant, he got a Spectrum and we got Pally, I can remember being um, utterly surprised and how, in my opinion, this was basically Mike, this was my opinion back in the day, really surprised at just how piss poor the Spectrum looked compared to the Commodore. I mean, the Commodore 64 it had, you know, super sharp graphics, there was none of this uh, colour clash that the Spectrum had. Um, the Spectrum, it just, I don't know, it looked, you know, it had like, was it eight colours, but half the time it was like really garish colours over there, like purples and reds over greens, and it just looked like a complete mess. It looked like it looked like somebody had spilled paint, uh, and all the colours were bleeding all over each other. And then when I heard the sound, I mean, bear in mind I was used to you know three channel SID tunes on the Commodore, and when I heard the sound, it was basically coming out a little beeper, little speaker thing, which was the size of like a, a watch speaker. I couldn't believe how piss poor it was. I really, really couldn't believe how bad it was. Um, and I must admit, that opinion, that was the opinion I held of the Spectrum back then. It really was. Um, I mean, I had all my games, like Summer Games, and Drop Zone, and Bruce Lee, and all these games. And Grant would fire up, like, you know, Drop Zone and Uridium on the Spectrum. And I just thought they looked shit. They really, really, really looked really, really poor. So yeah, for, for many, many years, I thought the Commodore 64, I say, it had super silky smooth scrolling, um, razor sharp graphics. Yeah, sometimes the, the Commodore had its, uh, when it wasn't done properly, 
you had your expanded sprites and they looked bloody awful. But in the main, you know, you had the, the amazing music. I mean, you know, as as you know now, guys, the Sid chip in the 64 is, is such a fantastic uh, piece of hardware. I mean, it was way ahead of its time, you know, to the point that there's still people even now making uh, making music using the Sid, uh, Sid chip. Um, so yeah, I says I I was a Commodore 64 fanboy through and through. I thought the Spectrum was rubbish. Don't get me wrong. I used to, I was a bit jealous of uh, of uh, of Grant when he had like your attic, not your attic attack. What do you call it? Well, attic attack, I suppose. Some of the the uh, some of the ultimate games, your night lores and that. You know, the Commodore simply couldn't do things like that. Um, so yeah, I was a, a 64 fanboy and thought the Spectrum was rubbish. Um, moving on, 30 years. Um, I'm now lucky enough, I've got, I don't know, four or five Spectrums, I've got the Spectrum Toast Rack, I've got the Plus 2, I've not got the Plus 3, I've got the Plus, I've got two, two Plus 2s, I think is it the grey one, the black one, whatever, so I've had a Spectrum now for about four, maybe three, four years, and I have to say, I've really warmed it as a system, I can completely get why people love their Spectrum, um, I mean, I can only... The Spectrum, it was quite a, it was a very, it was a quirky, eccentric type computer. Um, it looked, you know, physically it looked crap. It was about, you know, tiny, tiny slab of plastic with this kind of dead flesh keyboard. Um, you know, the sound was non-existent and it looks, it just looks really cheap compared to the, the Commodore 64 which had its full kind of QWERTY, uh, movable keys, you know, um, but I says over the last three, four years I've really started to get the Spectrum, you know, some of the games, there was games that were out in the Spectrum that you just never, you'd never have seen in anywhere other than Britain, you know, I mean you had your Manic Miner which was, you know, obviously a miner, um, <laughs> yeah obviously he's a miner, but I think of other games, I mean you had Trash Man, which was basically you played the part of a, what do you call it, a bin man, emptying bins. You had your pyjama ramas, you know, a guy falling asleep trying to wake up for his dream. It just had, it had, it had some really, really unique games um, that you'd probably never ever got on any other computers. So yeah, I mean, the, the Commodore, glorious scrolling, fantastic sound. It was poor at vector graphics and it was poor at kind of polygons and obviously like pseudo 3D things like Night Law. The Spectrum, I believe, runs about twice as quick as the 64. And so if you if you got over the graphics, the colour clash uh, and the fact that there was very few colours, then the Spectrum really started to shine. You know, it was... The games that it had, it did really well. I mean, some of the vector games, it was this 3, 3D Star Strike, I think it was, Absolutely awesome game, really, really good. It's something that the Commodore 64 could never do. Then you had your the one which was like the third place machine, which was the Amstrad CPC 464. Um, again, it was one of these computers. I don't know. I think, I think the cost probably put some people off that. I mean, it obviously it came with the uh, it came with the screen. I mean, there's two screens. There was the one for the poor people, which was the green screen why anybody would want a green monitor is beyond me but then those with money you could get the red the red sorry the colour screen and uh, again I never really had any exposure to the to the Amstrad uh, until fairly recently when I did buy myself an Amstrad I don't have it now unfortunately I did sell it but uh, again the Amstrad it, it was always going to be the Commodore and the Spectrum were the two big ones in, in the UK they were the two I think the Spectrum probably more so, it, it was, it probably sold more units than the C64, the Amstrad was definitely a third place uh, computer, a lot of, I think the Amstrad, did it not, did it not have the same pro microprocessor as the Spectrum, I think it did, in Converse, or consequently what happened was a lot of the games in the Amstrad were almost straight ports to the Spectrum, um, now some of the games in the Amstrad were bloody horrific, but then there were really poor, poor games in the Spectrum and the Commodore, but I would probably say that you can shoot me down for this, guys, because I said I'm not. I'm, I've never really been into the Amstrad, but I would say a lot. Probably the biggest majority of Amstrad games weren't particularly good. But again, when the system was used properly, um, 
the games were mind blowing. Uh, now I can't think apart from Renegade, which is an awesome game. I mean, it just I don't know why it seemed to it seemed to nail the. It had it was really it's a colourful computer when it was done properly. I say some of the, the arcade games that came out for it were awesome. Um, I says there was like Sorcery, which I looked at recently, is a really really nice game. There's another game. I says uh, what do you call it? Renegade is probably the the game on the Amstrad, which is incredible. For another game, which uh, Stuart Campbell, who used to write for Amiga Power, he did a feature on Retro Gamer, and it was uh, basically Donkey Kong, and it was looking at all the different uh, different home versions. And was it the Ocean version that came out on the Amstrad? Is absolute dog's bollocks. Apparently, it is it is almost arcade perfect. Um, I might actually do uh, I might do a little uh, mashup in that actually. But apparently it was absolutely arcade perfect. So again, it just shows you in the right hands, the Amstrad was a cracking machine. But I says I think it just slipped. It <laughs> slipped. That's a word, a new word. Uh, it suffered from sloppy programming. Um, you know, they probably took the Spectrum version and they just changed a few numbers to get it running on the Amstrad. I don't know. I'm not a programmer at all, so I might be talking out a hole in my backside. But yeah, so. Uh, Amstrad, it was always a, a third place machine, and then the other big one. Well, there's other, there was the two other big, kind of most popular computers. There was the BBC, which again, it was one of these computers. It was stupidly expensive. I mean, it was what it was the computer that rich kids uh, got because it was a computer that you had at school. Well, at least we had at school. That was a computer that all the schools had under the uh, the BBC uh, computer program. Um, so yeah, the BBC was stupidly expensive. Again, in the right hands, it had some cracking games. I mean, obviously Elite is the most obvious one. That's an amazing game. Um, I've seen some other games on the BBC and it's really nice. Um, you know, so I think it's a really, really capable computer. But again, it just, because it had such a, kind of, a small share of the market, I don't think companies really, really devoted much uh, time and attention to making the games as good as they could be. Um, I mean, I can't think of, I can only think of a couple of games that were really good in the BBC. I mean, I've got, I've got a BBC sitting over there. Um, you know, I'm not, no doubt BBC owners could probably tell me some cracking games. But again, I say the, the, the BBC, it was a very capable computer, but it just, it just didn't, it didn't, it wasn't popular enough. To really get the programmers kind of working on it the way they should have. Um, and the last computer that I can really think of was the Atari. Now I'm not going to go into details as you know that was my kind of the first the first system that I really saw. The thing about the Atari, it came out probably two three years. It came out late seventies, um, before the BBC and Spectrum. So by time the BBC, not the BBC, sorry, the Commodore sixty four and Spectrum. By the time the Commodore 64 and Spectrum had established themselves, the Atari was, had been out for three, four years. So, you know, and that reflected in the software. I mean, the games that really I really enjoyed on the Commodore were the sort of early 1984 games. It was games that came from the United States. There was companies like Areola Soft, Synapse, Access, Data East. Um, various other American companies, and uh, I mean obviously they came. They were they were imported through U.S. gold, uh, but I got a hold of all these games uh, through the other means, shall we say? And uh, but yeah, so the the games, the early games in the '64 were the ones that held the most sort of nostalgia for me. Things like Bruce Lee, Drelbs, Blue Max, um, Stealth. Oh, what other ones? There was a load of other games. Um, I mean, Drop Zone, well, that Drop Zone, that was Archer McLean. But a lot of these early games, even things like uh, Rescue and Fractalis, um, the Eidolon, games that came out from LucasArts, I loved these games in the Commodore 64. And when I eventually got access to an Atari emulator, and then obviously later on I got access to the uh, original hardware, I realised that the Atari the versions that on Atari just completely blew the 64 out of the water. They were silky smooth, they were fast, um, had way more colours, you know, stuff like, uh, I mean, Archer McLean has, uh, has, put it, uh, has recorded it many occasions that the Atari 
was by far the best 8 bit machine and apparently had a lot more power when it, again when it was done right by the colours it just looked absolutely awesome so yeah the games I mean obviously the programmers had had 3-4 years to get to grips with the hardware so the games are obviously going to be better on Atari but uh, yeah the early games on Atari absolutely knocked the game knocked them the, the 64 version out of the water it was just head and shoulders above it the sad thing for Atari was again by time or the, the biggest problem I think with Atari was the price of the hardware I think you're talking about £300 whatever and by that point Commodore and uh, Singler had brought the prices down of the Spectrum in 64 and uh, by the time Atari realised that they had to bring down their prices to compete um, the market was saturated, everybody had their computer, they either had a Spectrum, Commodore or you know BBC Amstrad whatever and so the Atari just never took off and in games that were coming out, um, sort of modern games that were coming out in the Spectrum 64 Atari, the Atari versions were always absolute bollocks in most, of the, uh, in most of the cases. And again, that was just down to sloppy programming because the hardware itself was really, really capable. Um, so anyway, that's that's my thoughts on the eight bits individually. Um, as far, I mean, my favourite. 8 bit is going to be the Commodore 64. That was that was a machine I had. That's always going to be my favourite. As far as what the best 8 bit machine was, um, you know, based on me using them recently, um, getting a chance to play all the games that I missed out on back in the day. Spectrum was great for quirky games. Hardware wise, it lacked. It lacked colours, it lacked in sound, so it wouldn't be that BBC again it, most of the time most of the games were pretty poor graphic wise never really had a chance to see the Amstrad it would be a close run between the Atari and the C64 um, hard yeah, graphic wise I would probably say the Atari edged it um, purely in colours and it seemed to be a bit of a quicker machine but it was minimal but I think the thing for me with the C64 when it was done properly, I says it had the it had the sprites, it had the silky smooth scrolling, but the clincher for me with C sixty four was the sound. The sound was just bloody awesome. I mean, I don't know if you watch my Wizball mashup, the sound the the sound the, you know the sound effects and music on the C sixty four was just absolutely awesome. It had some fantastic games, you know, multiplayer games, your world games, your track and fields, your I'm not track and field summer games etc. Whiz ball. Um, I just think that the cream of the 64 to my mind was better than the cream of the Spectrum. Um, you know, it's a purely uh, subjective uh, viewpoint here. I, I dare say everybody else will have different opinions, but for that, for my mind, I would say the best 8-bit um, machine was the Commodore 64. Um, I've learned to love the other machines, but having a chance to compare them all, I would definitely say that the C64 was the best 8-bit machine. So, anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching that. It would be great if uh, any YouTubers would want to do a sort of a, a, a video response to this. Give me, give the community your opinions on what you would take as the best 8-bit machine. Obviously, there's other 8-bit machines out there. There's the... Uh, the VIC-20, there's the, the Dragon 32, you know, some more obscure ones as well. So have a think about it, guys. What, in your opinion, is the best 8-bit machine? It doesn't have to be your favourite machine. In my case, it was my favourite machine, but I would, you know, I would say the C64. Let me know what you think. Let me think, or let me, let me know what your opinion is as far as what is the best 8-bit computer. As usual, guys, thanks for watching.